time for What Are the Odds? Presented for the people by Caesar Sportsbook. Your app is ready, Emperor. Let's welcome in John Dostromsky and Chris Lepresti. All right, we'll start with Jed since we are already on the topic. So the three-point underdogs in Minnesota. JJ, the Vikings have the worst pass defense in the NFL. Is this a matchup where Mike White can capitalize and put some points on the board? I think the answer to that question is yes. First of all, Mike White was terrific last week against the Chicago Bears. I saw Mac Jones who has been dreadful all year, light up that Minnesota secondary. And now that Zach Wilson is where he belongs, on the bench, the Jets had a quarterback come in and find Garrett Wilson. All of a sudden, Elijah Moore made an appearance in the 2022 season. And yet, with this spread now down to three, public all over the Minnesota Vikings, J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 the Mike White tour whatever we're calling it these days see it keeps cooking all right listen i totally agree i think it's a great spot for the offense to move the ball to score some points to get into maybe even a little bit of a shootout we might say but let's be honest what we saw last week while it was tremendous they were playing an inferior opponent right this is a little bit of a different situation you know, say what you want about the vikings some people think they're frauds the bottom line is they're nine and two they're playing on their home turf kirk cousins non prime time even though we saw him win a prime time game not that long ago so the jet defense as great as it's been i know we're talking about the offense i have less concerns about the offense than i do the defense in this game i want to see them put up the big time performance against the big time offense which is what the vikings are i think the jet offense can move the ball and score points but the pressure is going to be on to keep up with the equally talented offense on the other side. Chris, I want to switch to the Giants. They have a big divisional matchup against the Commanders. They're two-point underdogs at home. Uh, they've lost three of their last four games, which is probably why they're underdogs. Are you surprised that the spread is still the same, even though they're getting some guys back from injury? Personally, I'm not. Just because of the way the Giants have looked in recent weeks, it's great that they're getting healthy, and there's absolutely some key pieces that are coming back, and it's the right time for it as they go into this stretch where they're going to play the Commanders twice in a couple of weeks here in a span of three weeks or so. But look, the Giant offense, again, and we're right now at receiver, health questions, illness, Darius Slayton, Kenny Galladay now, even though he's done nothing, has been added with an illness as well. So who is Daniel Jones throwing to the football to? Because the last few weeks, Saquon Barkley has looked human. He has not looked like the game-breaking guy we saw when things were going well for the Giants. So I still have questions about the offense, which is why facing a commander's team that's hot, three in a row, six out of seven, I can understand why the Giants are still an underdog at home. Gang, there's a reason these casinos, they do not build themselves. The odds make when they put these lines together, they know what they're doing. And the bottom line is this, the Commanders have been the better football team yep. over the period of, what, five, six, seven weeks? You mentioned it, CeeLo, the injuries for the New York Giants, the lack of weapons they have, the lack of firepower they have. You add all of that up, and you throw in Taylor Heineke, who's scrambling around, he's making things happen, McLaurin. That commander team's got a little something going right now. Now, the Giants with extra time to prepare, you like that, but there's a reason that spread is it, too. I can't hear the word commanders without thinking handmade still, but Chris, <laughs> if they lose on Sunday, do they still make the playoffs? I think there's still a chance because, again, they can they, they turn around and play Washington again in, you know, in short order, but... Obviously, winning tomorrow goes a long way towards putting themselves in a, in a much better position. We heard Connor last segment kind of break it down. You have the two big fish at the top of the division, Commanders, Giants, Seahawks, kind of battling it out for that those last couple of wild card spots. The Giants right now need just to get a win to get themselves back into you know feeling like they're heading in the right direction or you know getting back to where the way things were before you know things started to go south here at the last couple of weeks. But because they placed Washington twice, I don't think it's a must-win game, but it would go a long way. I would say three teams, two spots. The Giants must get one of the two. Right. If it's not going to be this game on Sunday, when they face off in a couple weeks, right after the Commanders had their bye, you cannot lose both games to Washington. If you lose both games to Washington, then you're dealing with the predicament with the rest of the Giants' schedule. We're probably on the outside looking in. All right. Well, time will tell. Guys, thank you so much. Appreciate it. JJ and Crystal Presti.